Have you been experiencing muscle and joint aches? How about chills, headaches, or a fever and other flu-like symptoms? Have you developed a rash shaped somewhat like a bullseye and spent some time outdoors in an area known to have ticks during the spring or summer? If you said yes to any of these questions, then you might have Lyme disease. No, not that Lyme. This Lyme, a fairly common infectious disease spread through the bite of an infected black-legged tick. Lyme disease was identified in the mid-1970s and is named after its town of origin in Connecticut. The bacteria responsible is the Borrelia burgdorferi, which resides in small mammals like mice and birds. Black-legged ticks acquire the bacteria by feeding on these animals and transmit it to humans when they bite. The incidence of Lyme disease is rising in Canada. There were 144 cases in 2009, which rose to 338 in 2012 and 917 in 2015. Given its prevalence, there's a lot of information and even more misinformation. So why are there so many alternative facts out there? Well, part of it has to do with online information from advocacy groups, and it's important to stay informed and distinguish fact from fiction. For instance, some sources say that any tick can spread the disease. This is not true. Only the black leg tick, also known as the deer tick, can spread Lyme. Even then, not all ticks carry the disease, and they have to be attached for somewhere between 36 to 48 hours before the bacteria can actually spread. You may have heard that Lyme disease can spread between people, either through casual contact, like shaking hands, or sexual contact. This is fake news. There is no credible scientific evidence supporting these claims. Not only has this been shown to be false in published studies, but the very biology of the bacterium is not compatible with this route of exposure. What is more likely is that sexual partners in the same household were individually bitten by the ticks, even if one doesn't remember it. Another common misconception is that the diagnostic testing for Lyme disease is usually wrong. There's information out there that blood tests are only accurate 65% of the time or less. In reality, this is misleading information. These tests detect the presence of specific antibodies present if the individual has the Lyme bacteria in their system. During the early stages, the body is still developing these antibodies, which is why false negatives are likely. This doesn't mean that the tests are bad, but that it needs to be used properly. It is also important to know that in Canada, patients who have been in an endemic area showcasing the bullseye rash and flu-like symptoms are treated without subsequent testing. If all of this sounds overwhelming, don't worry. Lyme disease is not fatal, and if caught and treated, most individuals will make a total recovery. Here are some reliable resources to check out for more information on symptoms, diagnosis, and treatment options. Remember, it's also a good idea to talk to your doctor if you have any lingering doubts or questions. They are there to help you. For more videos like this, subscribe to the McMaster Demystifying Medicine YouTube channel.